Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Chris Winslow. I'm head of the uh, Global Cloud and, and Data Center Business Unit with Flex. And with me is Ehad Tarasi, CTO for Equinix, the largest data center footprint in the world. Together we're going to talk, have a little, little bit different topic than maybe what you've heard earlier. We want to talk a little bit about taking the friction out of deploying data centers globally. As we've talked about this morning in the keynote and you've seen for six years now, you know, the world is collapsing from disparate networks into a large cloud. But as we talked about a lot, the edge cloud is going to become a big part of the future. And that's going to be driven by 5G. It's going to be driven by connecting more devices around the world, around the edge. And with that, it's going to require a much different environment for data center providers as well as for the carriers and others around the world. So there's a lot of things that have created acceleration in this world, and acceleration was talked about several times in the keynote. The ability to create workload-centric hardware is very specific to applications that are required, helps to accelerate things, as does the ability to put in more data centers closer to the customer, which creates us closer to the edge. That edge creates us closer to the devices, which creates lower latency, which allows many, many more applications to be happened. At the same time, as we do that, we got a global regulatory environment that we also have to care about a little bit. So with that, though, unfortunately, there's also a number of decelerators that happen at the same time. The ability to go generate that much real estate around the world in the right places at the right time that allow you to go do that deployment. The ability to create a, a supply chain that allows you to get into all of these different locations in a seamless and quick fashion to be able to take advantage of the economic environments around the world, to be able to deploy in those areas that is most beneficial at the right time and the right place. There's a whole tax and trade environment that continuously changes as we in the U.S. know over the last number of months. The world now has become very complex as it will require you to move hardware from one place to another to bring it into a new geography and your ability to go manage that from a cost, complexity, and transportation mechanism. And then there's the ability to go do localization in each one of these data center areas. Your ability to go uh, bring in the product that you need in the right place for the right time with the right community. And then we talked about the trade-off between CapEx and OpEx and the optimization associated with the right places for power and connectivity as well as the, uh, the cost of the equipment associated with that. So we take that to heart and we've built an ecosystem as flex around the world to allow us to, to take that friction out of the deployment of the data center. You know, we're one of the largest companies that you probably don't know with uh, over 200,000 employees in over 100 locations in 30 countries around the world. We have deployment centers for data center deployment in, in five continents around the world, in 30 different legal entities allowing us to take advantage of the tax situations and the ability to move capital between one area and another. We've been able to drive a, a mechanism using tools and technology for configuration, for supply chain development, to create custom solutions. We have in our booth today, you'll see custom power supplies for, for cloud environment. You'll see liquid cooled environments. So we have the ability to go do deep dive design in the OCP environment and others to allow you to do that, but then take that further into the global execution of our supply chain. We have an entire tax and trade mechanism set up globally to allow you to optimize the transport and, and availability of material from country to country to allow you to build out a data center as economically as possible. And we work with partners to create interoperability and interconnectivity around the world to create expansion that nobody has ever seen before. So with our technology leadership and the building blocks that we built that we're able to deploy for our customers, leveraging an open ecosystem like we have here today, and our ability to create an unprecedented global scale and cost competitive, we believe we can really be a trusted partner for those that are doing rapid data center deployment around the world. And being able to do that in such a way 
that allow you to focus on your business while expanding and as this market grows. And with that, I want to turn it over to Eab to talk about how Equinix has also taken the friction out of that same model in a very different way. Ehab? Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. I want to tell you a little bit about Equinix and who we are. I won't spend much time on that, and then I think we'll be able to take questions if somebody has some. Uh, thanks a lot, Chris. So first of all, we have a global platform of data centers around the world. We have 150 of them in all the key markets, over 40 markets around the world. Most of the places anybody wants to deploy is probably going to be available in Equinix. And anybody who wants to deploy hardware, like all of that stuff, will, will, is looking for a place to deploy. As we heard today, this morning, and I frequently talk to people, one of the biggest challenges with OCP is how long it takes to get the equipment and where do you put it and how you can take advantage of the economics. The economics are designed and the benefits are designed based on a full chain data center design all the way from the equipment to the cooling, the power. And so you need a data center company engaged to, for, for the community to take advantage of those uh, benefits. We just completed an acquisition of additional data centers from Verizon. We're going to be about another 175. I personally like that trans uh, transaction. I'm familiar with those assets, and I think they bring a lot of benefits to customers. And they bring also a lot of uh, ability to support the South America region, which is really expanding. We, we are a data center company. We are one of the best, if not the best, at the retail model that we build. So we design some of the best data centers. We build them, we operate them, and we support them. And we meet consistently six nines of availabilities, if not higher. We have the ability to customize for, for every customer what they want, whatever environment they need. And then we have significant physical security that you have to pass to get to that equipment and how you operate it, which is critical in, in this day and age. Beyond all of this, we have massive interconnection of how people connect to each other. We really are the home of the cloud, where all these cloud edges are being deployed. While they're deployed in a lot of places, we're probably the most prevalent place where you can get to any cloud or any network when you connect. So what's in our engagement in OCP? We, we started engaging with OCP March of last year, and we said our mission is to support the open source ecosystem as it develops. We want to support the open source hardware and software and it is an exploding and expanding ecosystem, and we, we really will continue to work with the community to see how Equinix can bring its capabilities and, and collaborate and brings benefits to the community. We, we are an interconnection company at heart, and a lot of the engagement at TIP, we're heavily engaged in the telecom infrastructure project to develop all the next generation design for next generation interconnection so we have massive scale automation and all the disaggregation can happen. In fact, in this interconnection piece, with, we, we are probably the place where most new hardware providers or software providers are trying to look for a place to put their stuff. We, we most likely will be the place that they need to go to. And then we want to extend the benefits of OCP for the broader market. This is uh, the, why we are engaged with Flex, is that we feel that the benefits are very obvious and available for the big hyperscalers. But beyond that, there are hundreds of other people who want to take advantage of that and we, it takes, it's going to take a connection of multiple of us to create the supply chain logistics, the model, end-to-end, -end, and all the support and operations for OCP to become real and beneficial beyond the top few hyperscalers. And that's one piece of that is what Chris and I just started talking about, what our companies are going down the path. It's going to be a journey, I just will tell you, because the model, so many pieces have to be put together. And the model is new and a lot of different demands from different customers. But, but we are going to start there, and you'll see, continue to see progress from us as we go down that path. I think it's the way of the future. When the world is expanding with the amount of data and all the new applications like IoT and storage and everything else, that the, you have to have a next generation infrastructure to support it. And we're going to continue on that path. So, if anybody has questions, we'll answer them. Hopefully, we didn't bore you to, teeth, to tears <laughs> with these slides. And maybe a, we'll take questions if somebody has one. OK. Um, say, yeah, the question was, are we, yes. The question was, are we going to the second and third tier cloud companies? Is that why we're engaging with Flex? I would say definitely one of the key markets, because 
there's a whole bunch of cloud companies who start inside public cloud. It doesn't matter if it's AWS and Google, but they get to a size and, and model distribution where they want to be owning their own infrastructure and they would want to go to an OCP model. So we, someone like us is needed to make that happen for them. So definitely. But and that's not the only one. We think the, yeah, what's the other? Yeah. You want to spend on that? And just, just to add to that, um, so you yeah, have uh, expressed it quite well. What we're seeing is a much more disparate footprint around data centers. And as we talked about in the beginning of this, when you look at things moving toward the edge of the cloud, there will be hundreds if not thousands more instances that are going to be acquired of data centers. That's an incredibly difficult task to deploy around the world. So between the data center footprint, which is the largest in the world by Equinix, and our footprint, which is the largest in the world in terms of deployment, there are numerous opportunities for us to go create a, a multitude of different data centers, whether it's tier one, tier two, or tier three. Yeah. And our ability to combine that together with technologies like OCP is brought here today creates a really seamless uh, opportunity for us to go do it rapidly and, and uh, frictionless. Yeah, and I would add that the networks are looking for this next generation architecture as well, and that will be also another major uh, beneficiary of that. So the second and third tier CSPs, the clouds, plus the big network providers as they go to a cloud architecture. That, that's what I mean, the telcos, yep. Yes. One last question before we wrap. Well, we want to thank everybody thank for you taking very much. time thank out you. here today. Uh, focus on your technology when you need to deploy. Think of us. Thank you very much.